I think shark bite fittings are a great way for homeowners to take on DIY plumbing projects in their own house. Now, sometimes you're going to have to end up removing a shark bite fitting because maybe there's a leak or you want to add another line. In this video, I'll show you how and when to use each of the two shark bite removal tools when you have to remove a fitting. Shark bite sells two tools for removing a fitting. There's a collar and then there's the tongs. Sharkbite has these tools for the different diameter of pipes that you could run into. Now the half inch diameter is the one that almost all of us are gonna use for the typical DIY plumbing projects in our house. Now, both of the removal tools work the same way to remove a fitting. What they do is they press this cylinder at the end of the fitting towards the body of the fitting. That releases the teeth that are gripping the pipe. You can then slide the pipe out of the fitting or the fitting off the end of the pipe, whichever works best in your situation. I've had to remove a number of shark bite fittings to fix mistakes that I've made that caused leaks. If you want to find out the six mistakes I've made that have caused leaks, you can check out the video that's linked up in the top corner and I'll link it in the description down below. The collar has a hollow side and a flat side with the raised printing. Always place the hollow side against the shark bite fitting. I found that the collar works best when you can get a good grip on the fitting because you're gonna to have to use that fitting to leverage with your hand to pull that cylinder towards the fitting to release the pipe. And generally this is gonna work best if either A, the fitting doesn't have a pipe on the other end because then you can place your hand over the end of the fitting and use that as leverage, or you have a fitting that has a right angle. So it could be an elbow, it could be a T, or it could be an angle stop valve because then you're gonna be able to get your hand around that angled piece to provide the leverage to move that cylinder and release the pipe. Now the newer Shark Bite Max fittings are easier to release but both the original and the newer shark bite max do take some effort but don't try to brute force this or you're going to end up damaging the pipe and the fitting now the tongs are going to be a better option when you can't get a good grip on the fitting so either there's a pipe on the other end of the fitting or it's in a tight spot where you can't really get your hand in there very well to grip the fitting the tongs have two ends one is smaller opening and the other is the larger opening so the way you put these on is you place them so that the smaller opening end goes on the pipe and the larger opening end goes on the fitting uh, past the cylinder where the O-ring and the teeth are. And then you just squeeze the two handles of the tongs together. That will move the cylinder and you can pull the pipe out. If you need more leverage, you can either try a trigger clamp or channel lock pliers. These allow you to pull the two handles together, but be careful, don't deform the tong handles by putting too much pressure on them. When you have pipes on both ends of the fitting, it's gonna be much harder to remove because there's really no space to pull it apart. In some cases, the best option is actually going to be to cut the pipe further down and add another fitting. This is especially the case with copper pipes, which have virtually no flexibility in them. PEX has a little bit of flexibility, but not really all that much. Once the fitting is off the pipe, you have to determine whether the fitting and the pipe can be reused. See, shark bites aren't meant to be taken on and off, on and off a number of times. The problem is that if you keep reusing it, you risk damaging the O-ring inside and then you're gonna have a leak. Now, shark bite doesn't have an official policy on this, but what I found I'm comfortable with is that if I've taken a fitting on and off more than two times, I just swap it out and use a new fitting. Always inspect the pipe to see what condition it's in. See, the teeth on the shark bite will have gripped into that pipe. Now, if you only see some you know, minor scratches, that's probably okay. It's never gonna be perfectly smooth. But if there are deep gouges, then you want to replace that section of the pipe with a new section of the pipe so that the shark bite will grip properly. And if you're unsure in any way, always default to replacing the pipe and the fitting. Now, you're probably also gonna find videos that say you can use an adjustable wrench to remove a shark bite fitting. What they do is they just place the wrench, tighten it on the pipe, and push the cylinder back to remove the fitting from the pipe. 
While this may work, and you see the videos it obviously does, it's not actually going to be as easy as they show because in many situations that fitting is in a tight spot. And it's my experience, I found it really hard to be able to think I could fit an adjustable wrench in there. I also have found adjustable wrenches because they have um, grip on those two sides of it, it tends to damage the pipe much more than the removal tool. So my preference is always to use the recommended removal tools, either the collar or the tongs, that shark bite sells. I think using shark bite fittings is a great way to be able to complete DIY plumbing projects in your home. I'll link to both of the removal tools and the common shark bite half inch fittings in the description down below. Now, if you're going to be using shark bite fittings in a DIY plumbing project, you want to avoid the six mistakes I show you in this video that have caused leaks for me in the past. Don't make those mistakes. Thanks for watching.